Well, hello, Maisie and family. <laughs> hello, Ryan. How are you doing? Uh, this Hi. Is Paul I'm doing great. Here at Scott. And uh, Ryan is, um, he's one of the co-founders of Wonderful Idea Company out in the Bay Area. He was a, um, gosh, it's been a couple years since you were here. You were a maker residence for summer. And then um, you came back as someone to help us out with our Tinkerfest and help people understand linkages and, and crazy contraptions and curiosity and all those wonderful things that, that you're so good at putting together as a master tinkerer and uh, uh, idea generator. So uh, what have you been up to? <sighs> well, it's been obviously a crazy um, few months uh, for me and it's great to talk with you. I think, yeah, the last time I was at a museum was in 2018. Um, yeah. And so I have been, living a life, traveling to uh, museums all over the world, uh, doing workshops, working with schools. And actually I was in the UK working with the Cabaret Mechanical Theater, the same group that uh, put on the traveling show at the museum uh, right at the beginning of March, right when everything shut down for COVID-19. So I was kind of right in the middle of that, um, you know, travel of trying to get back into the US um right at the time when everything was was closing down um, which, wow. so anyways so i've i've uh i guess for the past three months i've been uh living a much uh less uh worldly life and i've been uh mostly in los angeles doing um lots of online tinkering programs well so online tinkering programs how that how's that going we've i mean at the amazium <laughs> we've, we've we've shifted to online delivery as well with the amazium you and um it's been you know, quite a, not a surprise, but it's just been pleasant to know that people still want to stay connected, even though, you know, you, you think about the things that we do and the business we're in and how we're trying to get people to come together to make and tinker and get their hands on things and be in close proximity and to have to make that shift to, you know, essentially doing what we're doing right here is having a conversation, you know, six, yeah. 5,000 miles apart. And, you know, trying to carry that hands-on, that same maker mindset into that digital realm has been, I think it's been something that's been uh, surprisingly fun, but also very challenging. What have you learned? Yeah. So, I mean, for me too, I've been doing um, after-school programs and now some summer camps, both with uh, Wonderful Idea Co. And also I've been partnering with an uh, organization in the Bay Area called Tinkering School uh, to do mm -hmm. some programs, uh, summer camps, and after school programs. And yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for sure, it feels very different tinkering, um, you know, ov uh, over a screen. I think that um, there, it's, you know, a little bit more challenging to find opportunities for people to collaborate and work together. Um, and also facilitation is a bit tough in deciding whether or not I should jump in and, um, you know, ask a question or make a comment. So I think it's been a little tricky uh, adjusting to facilitation online. But I think there are also some kind of cool advantages about doing these virtual tinkering programs. Uh, one of the things I really like about it is that at the end of the after school program or summer camp, people don't have to stop making and tinkering. Um, mm -hmm. Either we're doing programs where they're using household materials or we're giving them a kit. And at the end of the day, all we can say is, all right, well, thanks for joining us. And, um, you know, we're going to sign off now, but you have everything you need. If someone's in the middle of an exploration, if they're still working through a challenge, they can keep tinkering and keep playing. And so I really like that idea that when they are able to tinker at their house, um, you know, they don't have to start and stop uh, on mm -hmm. the same schedule as a school or a museum visit. Yeah. And it's almost uh, really enhanced the creativity and curiosity, if you think about it, because they don't have that pressure of having somebody there who's the expert who knows how to do it. And they don't, they can't, they can't just walk over and say, um, I don't know how to do this. How, how do I do this? They've got to actually now sort of figure it out. <laughs> exactly. No, it's been amazing. Um, I've been on some after school programs or, or camps where, 
um, you know, one of the students or tinkerers has their screen off and I'm not sure what's going on. I keep asking, hey, are you there? What's happening? You know, and I'm thinking maybe they're getting a snack out of the fridge. And then a half an hour later, they turn on their screen and they've been building this uh, amazing chain <laughs> reaction the whole time. And it kind of shows to me that actually that's right. For the most part, as a facilitator, I don't need to tell them what to do. I'm just there in case they need me, but really they're in charge of their own learning process. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, hopefully we'll see schools sort of make that shift here when when they spend another, at least some time online learning this, this fall. Yeah. And yeah, and so, and so some of it has been through online facilitation, then other projects we've been doing have been through um, building some physical materials. So I was going to share one of the projects that we've been working on, um, maybe before we talk about Automata, but we, we were in the middle of a research project with a school in Oakland to develop uh, mini exhibits that they could use mm. in their classrooms and libraries. Um, and that we had planned to test out these um, uh, new tools and materials with the students over the whole spring. So once school shut down, we actually completely shifted gears and instead of mini exhibits for schools, we started to change for mini exhibits for home or to work around the kitchen table. And just one fun example that we were experimenting with is this, um, have you ever seen this before? It's this, um, it's a cardboard mm -hmm. that's actually a mirror. Yes. So it's really cool. It's like a, a really beautiful mirror. And it also, um, you know, uh, is really easy to cut just with scissors or, you know, any material. So you can cut it, you can make it whatever shape you want really easily. And so we just combine that material in a triangle and uh, toilet paper tube, since we've all been hoarding toilet paper <laughs> this whole time. Um, and then when you put it together, um, you know, it makes this really awesome DIY kaleidoscope. And you can even use it in Zoom calls if I put this over my uh, Zoom camera. Yeah, so you can just kind of really uh, experiment with different ways of making kaleidoscopic images. And we've also been using this as a tool to explore the natural world. So um, we've can you know just put these on the uh, the camera of our phone. So just mm -hmm. kind of you know put the kaleidoscope on the phone, and it allows you to take these amazing photos and videos. So you know just giving people some exploration tool that they can work on you know in quarantine at their homes or in their small walks around the neighborhood when they're able to get outside of it. Yeah, and it's it's so simple. I mean, it's really just a very simple project. Um, I looked at some of the images that you had posted uh, on your blog from uh, Nature, and yeah. they're incredible. I mean, it's just it's looking at things in a completely different way through that kaleidoscope vision, and then being able to capture it, being able to video or take a photo is really, it's, I, I mean, it's just so simple, but yet there's so much creativity and so much, of someone's personality being able to put into a simple project like that, that it's, it's just, it's amazing. Well, and, and I definitely will say that that is an area of collaboration that is um, part of this new tinkering online or, you know, the, the world that we've been in for the past three months. I've been able to do a couple projects with my former colleagues at the tinkering studio at the Exploratorium, um, where they have some simple prompts like, for example, take a photo of a light and shadow um, image, but then post it online and allow other people to draw on the shadow, remix it, turn it into something new. So I think that we do have these tools with us, you know, cell phones and, um, you know, cameras. And there are ways that we can um, inspire each other to work and to tinker and to uh, build on each other's projects. So I was really inspired by the shadow play explorations. We really looked to try and give them activities with things they could do around the house. We wanted a really low entry point, uh, just so, you know, and, and now they can do it with their family. Yeah, I've even been on some um, professional development workshops or calls with teachers or um, conferences. And just because the people are at home, their kids come on the screen and they start working and tinkering together. And I find that to be such an interesting way of learning where it's not just um, 
you know, the kids are learning and the parents are watching, but it really creates opportunities for the whole family to learn and play uh, together. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been fantastic. So uh, Crank Contraptions are coming up is one of our Amazium U activities, and uh, you really helped us take our Cranky Contraption game to a whole new level. We, we, we just leveled up after you <laughs> come to visit us. So um, what, what advice do you have for us to try and do Cranky Contraptions as yeah. a, a, digital, <laughs> a digital online experience? Well, I, I really think... Um, Automata, so making these moving mechanical sculptures that we call automata or the, you know, wire and wood cranky contraptions version of that. Um, it's really one of the best activities, I think, for tinkering at home because you really don't need that much. And there's so many ways that you can make um, cranks and gears and um, uh, different kinds of mechanisms and stories. Um, I'm really inspired by an artist, um, I think who probably had some pieces in the show at Amazium called Keith Newstead. Mm -hmm. And um, Keith has done workshops uh, specifically around junk automata. So not only are you building a mechanism, but you're also looking at all the recycled materials, the uh, food packaging, all the things that you have already around your house. And you're looking at them and imagining what they could could be. So I think that um, as you're thinking about automata, taking some inspiration from trash automata mm -hmm. or junk automata, you know, it really allows you to think about these everyday materials in a brand new way. Yeah. And, and I, and, you know, we're all getting a bunch of packages delivered to our oh, homes. Exactly. And yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I was saying. Really we have these toilet paper great, tubes, right? <laughs> yeah. I, come think, yeah, I, <laughs> I was going to show you, uh, maybe at the end, I'll show you my tinkering setup here, but I've definitely been collecting the um, packages and uh, cardboard boxes, all the Amazon deliveries, everything like that. Um, yeah. You know, and then the other thing I would, and the other thing I would say for the cranky contraptions online, just like all tinker activities, it's really amazing that we are part of this um, network and community of makers and tinkers from all over the world. So if you search for automata or um, kinetic sculptures or me mechanisms, if you look on Google, if you look on Twitter, you will see people from the UK, from Japan, from the US, from Mexico, all over the world who build these uh, playful moving toys. Um, mm -hmm. And we can get inspiration from that. Um, one of my favorite uh, in, uh, inspirations for these sorts of workshops is an artist in Israel called Noga El Hassid. And she has a workshop called the Moving Toys Workshop. And, you know, she has probably 20 uh, starting points for building with recycled materials, wire, string, rubber bands, just the things that you have around your house. So I really would recommend that people, uh, you know, do some, do some searching online, find some artists or some makers that inspire them, and then, you know, be, um, you know, kind of work off and see if they can remix or remake their ideas into their own projects. Yeah, and save your, and save your packaging. Save your packaging. Oh, Save you never your throw anything. I mean, yeah, definitely never throw anything away. Um, is what I've been, you know, one <laughs> of my mantras during this uh, this quarantine period is because you know you don't exactly know what's at the store. We've been trying to do some things on Amazon. You know, I've been kind of cobbling together a tinkering material set. But, you know, there's nothing better than, you know, a big fresh sheet of cardboard or, a, you know, solid uh, cereal box or something that you can build a project out of. Um, but yeah. the other thing that I would say as well, even if you don't have those recycled materials, getting inspired by nature. Um, can I show you one thing I was working on? Yeah, please do. Uh, last, last week in our tinkering camp, we were working on a, um, our theme was Lost in the Wild. And so we were making um, contraptions for our uh, base camp uh, and then programming them mm -hmm. using Microbit. But uh, I wanted to show you this gear system that I made just using um, cardboard, but also um, just sticks that I gathered from outside. So I think with automata as well, it, you can get really inspired by nature 
And that also can give you both the, you know, the building blocks and the materials that you can make some really, um, you know, unique automata that will be unlike anyone else's right. because it's yeah. the stuff that you've gathered just from around your house. So I think in this time, a lot of us are, you know, experiencing nature in new ways. You know, we're mm -hmm. listening to the birds around our house. We're watching the sky, you know, at night. And I think in the same way, I'm really interested in the way that we can take natural materials around it and build it into our making and tinkering practice. Yeah, that's fantastic. And in some way, it's almost a throwback to making and tinkering of old when you, you had to you had to go out and find the materials to make make and tinker with. There just there wasn't Amazon delivery. There wasn't a grocery store. You were you had to go out right. and find the box. You had to go out and find the sticks in the woods. Yeah, and I and I think that you know I mean one of the challenges that people are naturally having at this moment is being at home. You know not being around their friends, not being able to go to school, um, you know, can be that they're looking for something to do. And I think these tinkering activities are really perfect for that because it's not a step-by-step -step process where you follow the directions and then get to the end point. But it's really an iterative practice where you are testing out an idea, trying something new, making a more complicated automata, uh, seeing that it doesn't work and trying to figure out why it's not going the way you expected it to. And, you know, when you really get in that flow state of the tinkering process, um, you know, there really is no end point for how deep you can go, um, you know, exploring automata uh, or cranky contraptions for that, for that matter. Right. Well, Ryan, you know, it's been great catching up with you again. Uh, we really enjoyed having you come to the Amazium and invite you to come back any time that you want. Um, we <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till we can travel and um, come back and visit my friends in Arkansas. Um, in the meantime, yeah. I have my tinkering supplies over here, so I'm going to be continuing to um, build new things, and I'm going to continue to... Uh, post the experience, experiments that I've been working on, both on our Twitter account and also at our website, thewonderfulidea.co. Uh, we're still always posting new ideas on our blog, um, you know, the latest things that we're uh, exploring and, and trying out. Oh, well, fantastic. We will include a link to that, and uh, we will definitely hunt down some of those resources that you mentioned <laughs> when we get to uh, yeah. Automata and Cranky Contraptions so that uh, people can uh, be inspired by creatives throughout the world. Yeah, I think that's what it's all about. You know, even though we're by ourselves at home, I think we can be connected to this huge community of makers and tinkerers, and I'm super happy to be part of the Amazium family of makers and tinkerers. Well, we're, we're always happy to have you. So uh, it's been great catching up with you, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon.